sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began ash was redeemed only beauty remains and my orphan heart was given a name my morning grew quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace Happy Easter. Welcome to First Methodist here in Zephyr Hills. It is Easter Sunday. Welcome to our online church family as well. We are glad to have you here. This is the biggest celebration of the year for followers of Jesus Christ. This is when we come together and we worship our resurrected Savior, uh, the one who came for us, the one who lives for us, the one whom we're going to be with again. 
and we're glad that you've chosen to be here. Beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, we've got just a little bit of maybe a threat of rain outside. After the service today, we have an Easter egg hunt for our children, for those all the way up through fifth grade. Uh, we're still planning on doing it outside in the courtyard. And so at the end of the service, for parents or guardians or grandparents, you want to see the Easter egg hunt, be a part of that, you can go to the courtyard in between Cooper Hall and Education Building. If you don't know where that's at, Cooper Hall is right behind us. You can go out this way and just go down the street and you'll see the courtyard on the right. Or you can go in through Cooper Hall and go around that way to see the Easter egg hunt. Unless it just decides to have a, a giant downpour, which they will then furiously uh, try to move everything to the inside. But we're planning on having it on the outside at this point in time. But it is just a beautiful Sunday to gather here. We've got the wonderful lilies for Easter. If you ordered one of the Easter lilies, you are welcome to pick those up after the service today. You can take them home with you, plant them in your yard be something of beauty uh, year-round for you as it comes up year after year. I do want to mention the flowers on the communion table here. They're offered in memory this morning of Patty Meese. And they're from Marie Meese, uh, Alice Perry, and Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Perry and their family. And we're grateful for them to help beautify our time, our place of worship here this morning. I want to invite you to stand on this Easter Sunday. I want to remember why we are here. Well, what about this God that we worship together? So we're going to affirm our faith together, as you'll see on the screens. Our affirmation of faith this morning simply that we believe, let's affirm together, we believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. We believe that He is the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. We believe that He is in the Father and the Father is in Him. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we have life in His name. Amen. Let's sing our praises together. Broken underneath his feet, death is crushed. 
is risen. Romans 8.8 8 reminds us, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live in him. Let's sing of this resurrection power. You called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame. I see the old has passed away. The new has come. Now I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus, you have given us freedom. No longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. I'm dressed in your royalty. Your
of your goodness, you have given us freedom.
Let's pray. We give you honor and praise, Almighty God, on this Easter Sunday for giving us life, for giving it to us again in Jesus Christ. Father, that's such good news as we, uh, as we come to you and worship on Easter Sunday to realize that when we throw our lives away, when we make giant mistakes and, and follow down a path that leads to some very ugly things, that we can always get a restart. We can always come back and get new life in Jesus Christ. So Heavenly Father, this morning... We ask for it once again, that you would forgive us for where we have fallen short, forgive us for where we have sinned, forgive us for where we have made choices, which it's felt like that we can't recover from. But we know we can in you. We can always turn around. We can always make a different choice. We can always come back home to you. And Father, I pray that for so many of us here this morning, for those of us in person, for those of us online, that today would be like a homecoming. That we would be coming home to you, the one who gave us life. And one who gave us Jesus Christ. We pray that you would not only forgive us for where we have fallen short, but that you would set us free from the sins that have controlled us. Set us free from the things that have enslaved us to the ways of the world, that we can leave this place in a little while with a fresh perspective, with a, with a new start, as the case may be. God, the world that we live in can be so, so negative at times. We, we watch and we read the news we get consumed by things on social media that just steal our joy. That hinder the abundant life that you want us to have. Father, I pray for myself and I pray for all of us here on this Easter Sunday that we would just commit to a fresh start in, in what we pay attention to. In what we read and in what we hear, what we, what we see and what we, what we participate in. That we would be about those things that add to our lives. Add good things to our lives. Not those things that, that sap our lives and that steal our joy. Father God, help us to have times and places where we can be with people. Family members, friends, co-workers who who add life, who add joy. And help us to be intentional and, and committed enough to restrict the inputs that steal joy. Father God, there's so much goodness in this world because you created it. And there's so much goodness in other people because you've created them so much goodness in us because you've created us. Let that be our focus moving forward from today. Let this Easter Sunday in the year 2023 be a time and a place where we can just put a stake in the ground and say we're going to move forward and we're going to be about those things that add life and joy and peace. You make it possible. So make it possible for each one of us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. As together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
ordinarily about this time in the service we would dismiss our children to church, children's church. We're going to ask you to hang on just a little bit. we got some re- something really special in store for you in children's church with some resurrection eggs things. Take a little bit of prep time. So we'll, we'll dismiss you here in just a few minutes. But for all of us, it's just stay here and continue to worship the Lord with the giving of our tithes and of our offerings. Amanda? And with that, I invite our ushers to come forward to accept those. Remember, you can also give online. It is safe and secure. If you're our online family, you can also do that. All you got to do is go to our website and click the image that says offering and then follow the directions. If you need any help, call the church office. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you gave your ultimate sacrifice to us by giving your son in death to pay for our salvation. And this morning, we celebrate his rising in victory. Father, we ask that you give us the courage to make sacrifices in our own lives. Help us to give our tithes and offerings freely so that we may further your kingdom and glory and honor. We ask all these things in our Lord's mighty name. Amen. First, I am afraid, but not because of fear, but the Holy of Holies is drawing me near. A voice like thunder shakes the ground I'm on. I hide my face. The shadow of your wings, O oh Lord, I hide my sin from the beauty here before your throne. Your throne. Hallelujah for the blood of the Lamb that was slain. Hallelujah for the blood of the Lamb that was slain.
inside your wounds we hide hallelujah for the blood of the lamb that was slain hallelujah for the blood of the lamb that was slain and so we enter in to see your face and enter in to see your face oh god oh god Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of God. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go into Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, our children are headed to Children's Church to get ready for the Easter egg hunt. So Miss Karen will be right over here at the door. So children all the way up through fifth grade, you're welcome to come. Uh, middle schoolers, high schoolers, uh, again, we don't have that Sunday school class today because we want to keep you in here and keep you engaged for what's going on in our time of worship. Uh, but uh, children all the way up through fifth grade should be an exciting Sunday. And I haven't seen a downpour, so we're going to have an outside Easter egg hunt right after the service is done. Well, welcome once again to Life Between the Gardens. Two weeks ago, we began this worship series uh, at the Garden of Eden, where human history began. The Garden of Eden is where humanity failed, where sin and death entered into our existence. We continued last Sunday, last week, to the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, the garden where Jesus wrestled to accept his mission of suffering and dying for our sins. The Garden of Gethsemane is where Jesus, by his obedience to the Father's will, he brought righteousness and he brought life to everyone who would trust in him. And today, Easter Sunday, our story continues, and we finish uh, in a garden once again, the garden tomb. Let me uh, go to John chapter 19, just a couple of verses here, if you've got your Bibles with you. Uh, the Gospel of John chapter 19, verses 41 and 42, says, At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. All right, quick backstory on this here. After Jesus had prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, we talked about last Sunday, Judas and the chief priests and the elders and the officers of the temple, they came to arrest him. They arrested Jesus, and then they, they tried him without justice in the middle of the night, and they sentenced him to death. And it was a, a method 
of execution that was designed to be deliberately slow and painful. They ridiculed him. They battered him. They tortured him. And then they nailed him to a tree and they put him on public display where people walking by would see him naked and exposed. Jesus died at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, dying much quicker than most victims of crucifixion would have died. Now, normally the, the corpse of a crucified criminal would have been left out for the vultures. But there was a prominent Jewish leader, the story tells us. His name was Joseph, and he was from Arimathea. And he asked Pilate for permission to bury the body of Jesus. Well, Joseph, like another prominent Jewish leader named Nicodemus, had taken a special interest in Jesus. So the two of them, you've got Joseph and you've got Nicodemus, they took Jesus' body a short distance away to a tomb in a garden. Now, it was a new tomb. It was in a garden where Jesus was crucified. Joseph apparently owned the tomb. It had been cut into the rock in preparation for his family's use, his own family. It wasn't uncommon in a day for the wealthy to prepare such a tomb in advance because of the difficulty of, of digging graves in the rocky ground around Jerusalem. So there it was, a new and an unused garden tomb. And that's where Joseph and Nicodemus took the body of Jesus. They did so just in time because the Jewish Sabbath was about to begin. And when the Sabbath begins, they would have been forbidden to carry anything, let alone a corpse. Since it was almost sunset, they didn't have time to give the corpse a full burial treatment. So they simply wrapped Jesus' body in strips of cloth, linen, and with a large quantity of fragrant spices to, to counter the smell of decomposition. And they put him in the garden tomb. So we've got from the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Gethsemane to the Garden Tomb. Now, if this were the end of the story, it would just be another story, right? Just be one of those epic stories that they, maybe they make you read in, in high school, right? Just one of those stories from antiquity like the Iliad or, or Beowulf or the Epic of Gilgamesh. But that's not the end of the story. That's not why Jesus is famous. The pyramids of Egypt are famous because they contain the mummified bodies of ancient Egyptian kings. Westminster Abbey in London is famous because of the bodies of English nobles and, and notables uh, who are buried there, who rest in it. Muhammad's tomb is famous for the stone coffin and the bones that it contains. Arlington Cemetery in Washington, D.C. is famous because it's the honored resting place of many uh, outstanding Americans. But there is all the difference in the world between the garden tomb of Jesus Christ and these other places. These other places are famous and they attract visitors from all over the world because of what they contain. The garden tomb of Jesus is famous because of what it does not contain. You know, about 30 years ago, in a faraway kingdom called Indiana, where I'm from, <laughs> it's a true story. There was a letter. There was a letter sent to a deceased person, government of Indiana. A letter sent to a deceased person by the Indiana Department of Social Services, and this is what the letter said: Your food stamps will be stopped effective March 1992 because we received notice that you passed away. You may reapply if there is a change in your circumstances. True story. And another true story. There was a change in circumstances for Jesus, right? He was deceased. He was buried in a garden tomb for a couple of days, and then his circumstances changed. He was raised from the dead by the power of God, the same power that can change our circumstances if we believe in him, if we trust in him. The resurrection of Jesus Christ enables us to go from the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Gethsemane to the Garden Tomb to another garden, the heavenly city that John describes in Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Eden, the Garden of Eden was the garden of disobedience and sin. Gethsemane was the gardens of obedience and submission. Heaven will be the eternal garden of delight and satisfaction to the glory of God. Because in that garden, there will be no more sin, there will be no more curse, there will be no more death. 
The river of the water of life will flow ceaselessly, it says. And the tree of life will produce bountiful fruit. It's the garden where God reigns. It's a return to paradise. It's going back to Eden. Let me give you just a glimpse of how the Apostle John describes this garden at the end of time. Revelation chapter 22. Here's what it says. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Do you hear how this description of paradise links back to the description of paradise in the Garden of Eden? We've got the same symbolism here, the, the same symbols. You've got this, this idea of the river of the water of life, it says. Now, Genesis, in the beginning of the story, Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, says there was a river in the Garden of Eden. And here we've got this river of, wa of water of life. And then we've got this image of the tree of life once again. Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 and 24, it refers to the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. And it, that it was represented as, as perpetuating physical life forever. Adam and Eve were forbidden to eat of the fruit of this tree after they had sinned, but someday we will eat of the fruit of this tree and we will do so forever. We will have life forever if we trust in what Jesus has done. In this garden in the future where God reigns, no longer will there be any curse the curse will be done away with. The, the Bible describes this as a new Jerusalem. If we would read on, there's this idea of a new Jerusalem, of a new and a permanent Eden, which cannot be relinquished because there's no longer any curse. And just as Adam and Eve walked right alongside the Lord in the Garden of Eden with no hindrances, no barriers, so will it be again someday. The river of God that the Apostle John writes about here in Revelation, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who flows among the angelic powers in heaven. The Bible says this river now flows within the church. We see this when we see persons be baptized. The, the sacrament of holy baptism. We see this imagery of the Holy Spirit making clean those who are washed. Those who are washed by the waters of baptism, representing the, the reception of the Holy Spirit in their lives, they are washed more clean than snow, more clean than crystal. Now, using the images and the, the language of, of revelation, this river of God uh, filled up with water, representing the Holy Spirit. It, it flows through the Jerusalem above. It flows from God the Father through the Son. It's a river of life, it says. The water of life. Because it's the power of God himself, the creator and the redeemer and sustainer of our lives. Listen to what it says, Revelation 22 once again, the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. And so, we have from the Garden of Eden, where humanity failed, to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed, to the garden where God reigns forever. Does this sound appealing? I think this sounds absolutely amazing. Are you thirsty for the water of life? My guess is for many of you, whether you're new here today, visiting with us today, coming from out of town to visit family, or whether you're here every Sunday, my guess is so many of you are here this morning because you are thirsty for the water of life. Do you know that you need God in your life? 
Do you know that Jesus, who is God's salvation, that He died on the cross for you? Yeah, He loves you that much. He died so that you wouldn't have to die. And as we prayed earlier, you can change the direction of your life right now. Right here this morning, you can turn to the God who loves you. And that's a choice you make. You've got free will. You've got the freedom to choose. You can ask Him to forgive you of your sins. And you can choose to turn from uh, whatever sinful and selfish ways, whatever path you've been on, and you can turn to God. And you can receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You see, being a Christian is, is not just believing in some creed or some set of beliefs or even going to church on Easter Sunday. It's just a part of it. But being a Christian is having Jesus himself take up residence in your life, in your heart. So you can invite him in. You can acknowledge him as your Savior and invite him in to be your, your Lord, your leader to lead you throughout this life. And if you'd like to have Jesus in your life, if you'd like to become a Christian today right now, I want to invite you to pray with me. I want to invite all of us to pray together. Well, in fact, as we bow our heads and close our eyes just to kind of block out the distractions around us, I'm just going to ask all of us to pray out loud together. For those of us who are already followers of Jesus Christ, it'll just be a good reminder. And so as we, we focus on these words... Just take a moment of silence to still our thoughts, slow down the, our minds. We can focus. And I invite all of you here online, repeat aloud after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I believe you died for my sins. And rose again from the dead. Right now, I turn from my sins and open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Again, a great reminder for many of us, but maybe a fresh start for some of us. Maybe that's why you were brought here today. You thought you were brought here because you walked down the street and came in the building. You got in your car this morning and you drove here. That was no accident. God got you up this morning. God got you here because some of you needed a fresh start. And if you prayed this prayer sincerely, not because there's any magic in these words, but because it reflected your will and your desire, then this can be the beginning of a brand new life for you. And I would encourage you to not keep that quiet, but to, to share it with someone. Share with us, share with me between services, because this following Jesus, this way of life as a Christian, it's meant to be lived together. It's part of the family of God. It's not to be done alone. So talk to me or one of our worship leaders after the service or, or send me an email, give me a phone call this week. Let's get connected so that I can help you kind of get connected to the body of Christ, the family of God, whether it's here or wherever you live. We'll help you get connected so that you can have a brand new way of life. I invite you once again to stand and let's sing together as we celebrate our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus.
That is why we are here, and that is why we worship. Again, we are so glad that you've chosen to be here. If you are a guest with us today, welcome to First Methodist here in Zephyr Hills. Now, you've got some choices as you leave today. First thing is this. If you are a brand new guest, your first time here in person, we'd love to give you a gift. You can head out the back way towards the lobby, and our ushers will just give you a gift bag as our way of saying thanks for being here. For all of you, if you don't have plans, you've got nowhere to go, you want to sit for a few minutes, have a cup of coffee, a little bit of refreshments, we have a hospitality time every Sunday between our services, and it's in Cooper Hall. Cooper Hall, you can go out this door here and just go across the alley. You'll see the big sign that says Cooper Hall, and you're invited to go there. Or, if you would like to see our first Easter egg hunt in a few years, thanks to COVID and the, the joy on these children's faces as they've come, and uh, get out there and uh, scavenge those Easter eggs, it's in the courtyard between Cooper Hall and the Education Building. Now, some of you have been here 30 years and didn't have any idea we even had a courtyard, right? <laughs> so here's what you're going to do. You're going to go right out this way, or you can go that way. We can go through Cooper Hall and follow the signs, or you can go right out there towards the street and head down that way, and you'll see the courtyard on the right. Cooper Hall is actually a U-shaped building. Cooper Hall is the fellowship hall, and it goes like this in a U with our education building. It's two stories, and there's a courtyard right in between that. You'll see it right down there. If you go out to the street and turn to the right past the alley, you'll see the courtyard, and you'll probably hear some excited kids as they uh, wrestle for the Easter eggs this Sunday. For all of us, we've got a choice to make in terms of how we live this week. Live as a follower of Jesus. If you prayed today and received Christ in your life for the very first time, again, let us know. Let, let a church in your hometown, wherever that is, know so that you can get connected to a church family somewhere. We were designed to do this Christian life together. And if you're local, if Zephyr Hills or East Pasco is your home area, this is a pretty good place to do your Christian life. Amen? Amen. We'd love to have you experience that again next Sunday. We're going to do a brand new worship series next week. It's called Square One. We're going to go back to Square One, and we're going to spend four weeks just exploring some of the very, very basic parts of this Christian faith that we have. So if you'd like to join us, we'd love to see you. Let's go back to Square One next Sunday. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you've given us Jesus Christ. As we leave this place let us leave with more joy in our hearts and a spring in our steps that we would follow him wherever we would go and that we would go into the places and go into relationships in these environments that will add joy and add life because Jesus came that we might have life abundantly and eternally. Thank you, Father. We give all this to you in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen.